Good morning all, myself Dr. Kalyani, second year postgraduate in Department of Radio Diagnosis, uh, GEMS, Srikakulam. Today I am going to present my paper on role of CT in traumatic head injury. My aim in, in present study was to evaluate and assess the CT in patient with head trauma and to, and to study the various craniocerebral changes that occur in the trauma to head in the CT. Uh, introduction. Uh, head injury is a trauma resulting injury to the scalp, skull or brain. Head injuries due to road tra traffic accidents have become a daily occurrence and increased toll on human lives and limbs. Most of these patients are in the prime, uh, in the third and fourth decade of their life and they have direct social, uh, socioeconomic impact beside the emotional burden of suffering, a lifelong debilitating loss of function. Immediate and instantaneous death following cranial trauma occurs due to unpreventable primary brain injuries. However, death occurring within 24 hours of craniocerebral trauma can be averted by timely institution of diagnostic and therapeutic measures that could prevent secondary brain insults. Previously, the mainstay of diagnosis of trauma, traumatic lesions was best clinically evaluated and in plain angiograms of skull and cerebral angiography. An accurate diagnosis cannot be made on the basis of physical examination except on rare occasions. In addition, in that uh, extremely uh, deteriorating condition, it is difficult to perform a detailed examination. Uh, Sir Godfrey Housefield describes it in 1973 and prompt recognition of injuries in critical to reduce mortality and CT head is the cornerstone for diagnosis. Follow-up assessment using CT is frequently necessary to detect progression and stability of lesions and evidence of delayed complications and sequelae of cerebral injuries which can determine whether surgical intervention is needed, whether intubation is needed or not. And CT is the single most informative diagnostic modality in the evaluation of a patient with a head injury. Besides rapid implementation, it can demonstrate a significant primary traumatic injuries, including EDH, SDH, intact cerebral hematomas, uh, SAH, intraventricular hemorrhages, skull fractures, cerebral edemas, and etc. The present day scanners, due to refined technology, can further help in diagnosing diffuse axonal injuries, which were never thought of. CT is widely available, rapidly permits uh, diagnosis and monitoring of unstable patients. Moreover, CT aid in surgical planning, prognosticating outcome, and recovery time. This study attempts to assess the utility of CT in the diagnosis, management, and prognosis of patients with cerebral trauma. And my objectives are to evaluate the role of CT in a patient with head trauma to describe various spectrum of hemorrhages, those occurring head trauma with aid of CT, and to evaluate the early CT imaging with GCS and the patient prognosis. Uh, I have done prospective study, uh, I've conducted prospective study for the period of one year, and it is comprised of all the uh, head trauma patient uh, coming to the emergency patient, about 80 patients I've taken. With the, and, and evaluated by CT scan of head using 16 slice CT machine in gems. My inclusion criteria are all age groups with head trauma, head trauma that has occurred, but within 24 hours, patient with head trauma treated as in inpatients. And I have excluded all cranial trauma during childbirth, non-traumatic intracranial breeds, patient on anticoagulants, hypertense, non hypertensives previous CVS, uh, CVS um, patient with known bleeding disorders. Um, I have taken a complete history of the patient in a, clean, uh, in a performa, which included age, sex, type of injury, and the type was further classified into road traffic accidents, falls, assaults, industrial accidents, and miscellaneous. Follow-up follow, uh, follow of patients in the hospital stay was uh, performed, and after initial resuscitation, severity of cranial cerebral injury was graded with the help of GCS. CT protocol were examined with CT scanners in the supine position. Proper immobilization was attained, proper head position was attained, then a wide window setting was studied to visualize the various craniocerebral changes. And I've got the results, like a total of 80 patients who sustained head injury uh, presenting to emergency were analyzed. Uh, 58, 58 uh, uh, patients, that is approximately 72.5% were male, and 22, that is 27.5% were female, that is my uh, my studies male is to female ratio was 2.6 to 1. Ages range from 1 year to 70 years. The highest frequency of head trauma occurred, as I discussed, in the 31 to 50 years, like in third and fourth decade of the life. And the most common cause of head injury were RTA, that is approximately 65%. And this is the table showing uh, patients with head trauma presenting with various symptoms. Ma maximum of the patient, that is 46%, patients present with loss of consciousness, th uh, then vomiting ab about 35%, followed by seizures, al alcohol consumption, black eyes, and CSF rhinitis is the least. 
And this is the table showing severity of head injury based on mode of head injury. Uh, like out of 80 cases, 55 sustained mild head injury, 12% cases such as moderate head injury, and 13 had severe head injury. And RTA was the prime and the major etiological factor in all types of se uh, severity of head injuries. And this is the uh, graph showing uh, various lesions um, with patients with cranial cerebral trauma, like 25 patients, that is 31.2% had normal CT findings, 68.8%. Uh, that is 55 patient had abnormal CT in which 48.8% fracture followed by EDH contusions and leads to the intraventricular hemorrhage. And this is another table showing linear skull fracture was predominant seen in 30% of cases followed by basilar, commutator and depressed and diastatic fracture was the least. Abnormal CT findings were seen in 54.5% patients sustaining mild, mild head injury in all patients with moderate and severe head injuries. Uh, and the p-value is 0 0.01, which was statistically significant. Um, then comes to discussion, head injury is an increasing health problem globally. It is the leading cause of death and disability in children, adults, and in the major pro and the, in the most productive uh, age, and the patient present with head injury will be very, um, very useful in the management of the patient. Uh, in our study, the age of the patient varied from one year to 70 years. Majority of the patient found to be in the third and fourth decade of the life. The group is, um, this group, this age group is the most active groups. As we know, they'll go out for the work and they'll do the uh, basic living and time. And, and males are more prone to the uh, cranial cerebral trauma as, as most of the males to uh, go out for to earn their livelihood. And that's why the R male is to female ratio is 2.6 to 1, which was obs observed, which is similar with the study conducted in the USA with an incidence ratio of greater than 2 is to 1 for males compared to females. The reason for male predominance is that males, as we discussed, males move out for their livelihood. Okay. Then, uh, then traumatic brain injury is a prevalent and potentially devastating problem because prompt proper management can significantly alter the course, especially within 48 hours of injury. Neuroimaging techniques, which can be which can determine the presence and extent of the injury, and guide surgical planning and minimally invasive interventions, play important roles in the acute therapy of traumatic brain injury. Besides facilitating rapid, uh, rapid implementation, it can demonstrate primary traumatic injuries like EDH, SDH, IVH, etc. The present day scanners can even, as we already discussed, it can, uh, it can uh, diagnose uh, diffuse axonal injuries, which we were never thought of. Mm. And CT is currently the procedure of choice over MRI because it's faster and more readily available. So it is cost-effective, non-invasive, and assess the um, and non-invasive method to assess the time and extent of cerebral injury. This study attempts to determine the utility of CT in the diagnosis, management, and prognosis of patients with cerebral trauma. These are some of the images which are showing fracture line in the right zygomatic arch and lateral wall of right orbit and fracture line in the medial and lateral walls of orbit and next shows the linear displaced fracture noted in the anterior wall of the left maxillary sinus. And then this is, these are the uh, images showing some hemorrhages. My conclusion is CT is the most comprehensive diagnostic modality for accurate localization of the site of injury in TBI. The early and timely diagnosis of the precise lesion by CT not only had the substantial impact over instituting appropriate treatment and timely surgical intervention, but also helped in predicting the ultimate outcome. These are my references. Thank you.